Okay, in the previous class, we have discussed about uh, the differences between the discrete and continuous time complex exponentials. Okay, and we have seen that why these signals are important because they act as the building blocks from which any other periodic signal can be generated. Okay, so that is why whenever we have a concern about the frequencies, so when you decompose the signal in terms of the frequency or when you say frequency analysis. We basically con uh, concentrate on exponentials or sinusoid functions only. Okay, but today we will discuss the transformation of the independent variable. So we have defined a signal as a function of one or more independent variables. Okay, and as far as the signal processing or your signals and system course is concerned this independent variable is generally time okay so we have some variations with respect to time that become the signal it is basically nothing but a variation of different patterns you can say okay now there are some operations which are applied on this independent variable t which are very important operations that has <clears throat> many you can say much impact or it has importance in analysis of signals and systems okay so there are three basic elementary operations one is your uh, time shifting okay so if it is a discrete signal you denote time shifting by x of n minus n naught or x of n plus n naught if it is a continuous time signal xt your time shifting operation is x of t minus t naught or it can be x of t plus t naught okay now when you have a discrete case this n naught it can only be a integer value because the fractional values they are not allowed in discrete time okay yeah, this n itself is discrete it is only 0 1 2 3 4 so on so n naught has also to be integer whereas if you take a continuous time case this t naught it can be fractional also okay it is not necessary that it should be integer value now what is this operation you are applying this operation on t time axis so x of t minus t naught or x of t plus t naught simply means that you are shifting the signal in time. Okay. Let us suppose I have a, I denote this operation suppose as y t is equal to x of t minus t naught. Okay. I Means you have original signal x t, and when you transform its time axis. Are shifted by t naught, you get a new signal that is y t. So how x t and y t they are related. So if you see at t is equal to zero, it will be x of minus t naught. Okay. At t is equal to one, it will be x of one minus t naught, and so on. Okay. So if you interpret this equation x of t minus t naught, what it simply says, if I have a signal like this, suppose, okay, at zero, at t is equal to zero, this is the amplitude, this is suppose one, this is 1.5, okay, and this time is suppose two, this is minus one. If I say I have to plot x of t minus t naught, or in general you can say x of suppose t minus one. Okay. It means what you are doing simply is that you are shifting the time axis of this signal by one unit to the right. Okay. Because see, as per this equation, the output of y at t is equal to zero is nothing 
but the signal value of x at minus t naught. It means whatever is the man value at minus t naught that was basically shifted to zero. It means this signal x of t it is basically shifted by t naught to the right side so that the signal value at minus t it reaches to zero. Okay, similarly in other value. It means there is a time shift to the signal by t naught or in this case it is by one. So if it is minus one to two and whatever is the value at minus one it will come to zero. Whatever is the value at zero that will go to one. Okay, whatever is the signal value at two that will go to three. So all the signal, the entire signal in fact will be shifted by one to the right. So this signal will become like this. It will now start from zero and it will go like this. So zero to three. So at zero it has a value one. Now this will go to this point will come to one. Okay, so the information at t is equal to minus one is shifted to t is equal to zero. The information at t is equal to two is shifted now to t is equal to three. In fact, this entire signal is basically shifted by one to the right. Okay, so this is shift by one if t naught is one to the right side. This is sometimes we call it as delay operation. There's a time delay. Okay, so x of t minus t naught is nothing but a time delay. Okay, and similarly, if you have x of t plus t naught, it will be the reverse. In this case, actually, if you plot x of t plus one from x t. It is a left shift. Okay, you are shifting the entire signal by one to the left. It means the amplitude at t is equal to minus one will go to t is equal to minus two. Okay, the signal at zero will come to minus one. The signal level at two will shift to one. So it will be like this. Okay. So it will now go from minus two to plus one, and this signal value which was at zero, it has shifted to minus one. Okay, so this is called as time advance. X of t plus t now. Okay, so in the time shifting, we have two operations. Either it is x of t minus t naught or it is x of t plus t naught. So when it is x of t minus t naught, it means the signal is shifted simply by t naught time to the right, or it is delayed by t naught. If it is x of t plus t naught, the signal is shifted in time by t naught to the left, which is a time advance operation. Okay, and the same you can do in the discrete time, but in the discrete time, you have to Make sure that this n naught should only be a integer. Means in this case, I can also plot x of t minus one by two. It means I am shifting this signal by one by two seconds to the right. Okay, so minus one in that case will go to minus one by two. If zero will go to one by two, and two will go to two plus one by two. That is, it will become. Five by two or two point five and so on. Okay, but if it is discrete signal, you can have only x of n minus one. You can have x of n minus two, n minus three and so on for time delay. For time advance, it is just x of n plus one, x of n plus two and so on. So either you can shift the entire signal by one to the right, by two to the right, or one to the left, two to the left and so on. Okay. See, like suppose if I take a signal x n, okay. This is suppose that zero, it has amplitude four, then it has amplitude three, then two, then maybe zero, 
then again 3 and at this time it is 5 okay x and if I want if I plot x of n minus 2 from this this is a daily operation time delay so this signal is shifted by two samples to the right the sample at 0 will now come at 2 okay so at 0 you have 0 at 1 you have 0 at 2 now you will have 4 and at 3 you will have 3 then 2 then 0 then 3 and then 5 okay similarly if it is x of n plus 2 it has been shifted to the left by 2 samples so sample at 0 will go to minus 2 and so on okay so this shift in this case n naught it must be a integer only whereas in case of continuous time this t naught can be fractional also okay this is not necessary that it should always be integers right <coughs> so this is one operation that is called as time shifting so you are basically shifting the signal along the time axis either to the right or to the left and that operation is denoted by x of t minus t naught or x of t plus t naught okay and see so you get such type of signals now practically in many situations uh, like suppose in radar in radar signal processing what you do you transmit a echo signal from the transmitter this is suppose xt okay you transmit a waveform xt and if there is some object in the space or aircraft in the space this signal will hit that aircraft and it will be received back by receiver so you have a transmitter here you have a receiver here okay this receiver signal is called as echo signal okay now if you just ignore the interference of the noise components what you see that the signal received by the receiver is nothing but a delayed version of the signal that you have transmitted from the transmitter okay it means this delay is nothing but the propagation time how much time the signal takes to transmit from xt to uh, this transmitter to receiver so this received signal yt is nothing but x of t minus t naught the same echo uh, the same transmitted pulse but it will be received after some time t naught okay so it is delayed by t naught time so you can write it as x of t minus t naught so if you can find somehow this t naught by using these two signals you can see what is the propagation time okay how much time this pulse takes from the transmitter to hit this object and it is received back so from that time you can calculate then the what is the position of the aircraft from the transmitter basically or in case you have one transmitter and you have multiple receivers so the signal received at different receivers that will be nothing but the a copy of the same transmitted signal but shifted by different times uh, the propagation time will be obviously different so you have a different for one case it may be x of t minus t naught in other case it may be x of t minus t1 or whatever t in one it may be okay and then finally how you compute this t naught we use a very important uh, operation that is called as correlation and what correlation simply does that suppose if i have a, a signal like this let us suppose i have a signal like this this is my transmitted pulse okay and i am receiving this pulse after some time t naught it means the received signal is nothing but the same pulse but it is shifted in time okay this much is the time delay okay so this is xt this is yt now using xt and yt how you can find this t naught which gives the propagation time at the time of travel 
So we simply use a function that is called as a correlation. What the correlation does, it multiplies the two functions and integrates them. Okay, it is basically something like this. You have x of t, y of t minus tau, you can say d tau and r tau. So it is a function of lag or delay. You, multiply, you keep one signal as fixed, another signal, you delay this in time, you multiply them and integrate them, and you plot this value as a function of tau, which is called as time lag. Okay? It means in these two signals, if I keep yt as fixed, and I shift this signal by tau, and multiply and integrate, how you are getting to got this correlation. So you at this time when tau is zero, this signal has no overlap. Okay. At this point, this is zero. And between these two, between this time interval, this signal xt is zero. So if you multiply them at tau is equal to zero, your output is zero. So as you shift this signal in time by tau, some tau value. Again, suppose this signal comes here. There is no overlap, you will get zero. Now when the signal comes here, there will be some overlap. Okay? It means some portion of this signal is now overlapping with this signal for this much of tau. So as a result, you will get some value here. But when you shift exactly this signal by T naught, when tau is equal to T naught, at that time these two signals will exactly overlap. And as a result, the correlation in that case will become maximum. And after that again it will start decreasing. When this signal just passes this signal, the correlation will become zero. It means it is something like this. You are getting zero correlation, then it will increase at some time t when t is tau naught is equal tau is equal to t naught, you are getting the maximum value. So if you have two signals, you find the correlation and you have to simply look where the, at what time, the maxima occurs. You can find this t naught, so that will give you nothing but the time of travel. Okay? So in radars or in sonars, whether you transmit the signal in air or you transmit the signal underwater, underwater communications, you encounter these type of signals, the time shifted signals. Okay? Because you transmit one signal, and after just some time, the same signal is received. So this received signal is nothing but the shifted version of the original signal. Okay. And the second operation that we have is called as folding. Time folding, you can say. So time folding is nothing but you replace t with minus t, x of minus t. And if it is the script signal, you replace n with minus n. This is called as time folding. Okay? And what it will simply do, if suppose I take a signal xt like this, maybe 0, 1, this is time is plus 2, 1. And if I plot x of minus t, how x of minus t will look like? x of minus t means what? Whatever is the value at positive value of t, that will go at the negative value of t. Okay? Whatever is the signal value in xt at t is equal to 1, that will become at t is equal to minus 1 in x of minus t. Because see, yt, uh, yt is x is equal to x of minus t of transformation. xt is the original signal. And when you fold it, when you transform it, it becomes yt, which is nothing but x of minus t. So, of course, y0 will be same as x of 0. y1 will become x of minus 1. y of minus 1 will become x of 1 and so on. It means whatever is the signal value at minus 1, it will go to 1. Whatever is the value at minus 1, it will go to 1. So, it is simply folded around this y-axis. Okay? So, if you fold it, it will become like this. Okay? So, it is flipped around this y-axis. The signal is folded. So, these values which are at 0 to 1, 
now they are coming between 0 to minus 1 the amplitude is same just the signal is reversed in time so whatever is the value between 1 and 2 that will come between minus 1 and minus 2 and so on okay and similarly for x of minus n whatever is the value at 1 that will go to minus 1 so if we have a signal like this let us suppose I take a simple signal this is 2 this is 1 this is suppose 4 xn and if you plot x of minus n what will happen the signal at 0 will remain same the signal value at minus 1 will go to 1 it means 2 will come here and this 4 will be here so it is nothing but flipped around this i axis okay so in the folding operation the signal is flipped or it is folded around t is equal to 0 okay so the positive the signal values at the positive time intervals they will be reflected at negative and the signal values which were at negative t they will come to be positive t the amplitude will remain same okay so this is another operation which is called as the folding operation and then we have one more operation that is called as time scaling so in the time scaling you have a original signal xt when you scale it it becomes x of suppose alpha t you multiply t with a parameter alpha this alpha may be positive, it may be negative, it may be less than 1, it may be greater than 1, it can be anything. Okay? Means, if it is, of course, if it is negative, it means you have two operations at the same time, because in that case, minus t is also there. So, you have scaling and folding at the same time. Okay? So, just to avoid this confusion, I just take two cases. Alpha is positive and alpha is greater than 0. Or sorry, not then it will become so positive and negative. X t is transformed into x of alpha t. This is called as time scaling operation. Okay, and alpha can be greater than one, or alpha can be less than one. Okay, and similarly, x of n in this case, if you transform it to x of alpha times n okay so you will see that the difference between them you start from xt and you take suppose i take one example from xt i generate two signals one is x of 2t and one is x of t by 2 so in this case alpha is here 2 for this case alpha is 1 by 2 so this case I have taken where alpha is greater than 1, in this case alpha is less than 1. Now how you interpret this equation, time scaling. Now yt, my yt is x of 2t. And in another case, output is x of t by 2. So it means y0 is equal to your x0 y1 will be equal to x of 2 okay y2 is equal to x of 4 and so on in this case here your y0 is x0 y1 is x of 1 by 2 y2 will be equal to x of 1 and so on so if you interpret this what it means if you see for this x2t in xt and in x2t which is i have written as yt the same signal value as zero they are same but the signal in the output at t is equal to one is nothing but the signal in the input at t is equal to two okay the signal in the output at t is equal to two is nothing but the signal in the out input at t is equal to four so what it means you are basically compressing the signal by a factor of two it is linearly compressed by a factor of 2 and in this case x of t by 2 it is linearly stressed 
because whatever is the signal value in the input at t is equal to 1, it is coming at t is equal to 2. So it is expanded in time basically by a factor of 2. Okay. So if you plot it, let us suppose I take a simple signal like this maybe. This is 0 to 1. This is 1 at t. Okay. And from this signal, if I plot x of 2t, how it will look like? The time axis of this signal will be expanded. Sorry, in this case it is compressed. Because the signal value at 1 in the input will now come at t is equal to 1 by 2 in the output. Okay? In this equation x 2t, if I put t is equal to 1 here, okay? So what will be output? Output is y1 is equal to x2, but if I put t is equal to 1 by 2 here, I will get output y of 1, which will be equal to x of 1 by 2. Okay? It means whatever is the signal value in the input signal at t is equal to 1 by 2, that will come in the output at 1. Okay. This should be one by two. Sorry, this should be. If I put t is equal to this is one by two. One by two is equal to x of one. This is like this. Okay. Sorry. So whatever is the output input at t is equal to one, that will come at one by two. It means this signal, if you perform x by 2 operation on this, it will be compressed by a factor of 2. So it will become like this. Okay? It is linearly compressed by a factor of 2. So the time axis is now half. Initially, the signal values, they start from 0 and end at 1. And what is a linear function? Now, in the output, you have compressed this signal by a factor of 2. So the time axis is compressed. So the signal information, suppose it was for 1 second, and the same information is available in the half seconds. Okay, the amplitude will not change. See, this is 0 to 1 in the input, this is 0 to 1 in the output, but it is linearly compressed. Okay. And if you plot x of t by 2, in this case, it will be stretched by a factor of 2. Okay? So in place of, the signal was from 1 to 2, now it will go from 1, 0 to 2. Like this. The amplitude is again at 1. Okay? It means if alpha is greater than 1, your signal is compressed by a factor of alpha. If alpha is less than 1, it is it is stretched by a factor of alpha. Okay? So we will take some more examples. <clears throat> Let us suppose I want to say what is x of 3 by 2t or maybe x of 2 by 3t. Now for this case, your alpha is greater than 1. For this case, your alpha is less than 1. So obviously in this case, the signal will be compressed in time. In this case, it will be stressed in time. Okay? So if you start from any signal, if you take any example, let us suppose I take this as input signal. 0, 1, 2, this is 1, xt. And I have to plot x of 3 by 2. Okay? So a simple way to do this is that, see in the last uh, example when we have plotted x of 2t, this signal was compressed in time by a factor of 2. So it means time axis is now half. So it, it became like this. Uh, just one minute. The signal become like this. The amplitude remains same, but its time axis is compressed. So this 1 will become 1 by 2. This 2 will become 1. 
So you can simply get this signal from this. You just divide its time axis by alpha basically. Okay. So if you divide time axis by alpha, that is 2 here. So it will become 1 by 2. This 2 will become 2 by 2, that is 1. So in the same way, if you plot x of 3 by 2t, so this input signal xt is going to be compressed by a factor of 3 by 2. Okay. And how you get the output? So you have to simply divide this time axis of the input signal by 3 by 2, which is alpha. So 1, it was initially 1, this was 2. Now 1 divided by 3 by 2, it will become 2 by 3. It means this point, this time, which was 1 in the input signal, it will become 2 by 3 in the output signal. And similarly here, this 2, it will be divided by 3 by 2. So it will become 2 by 3 into 1 by 2, it is 1 by 3. Okay, so this 2 will become 1 by 3. The rest will be same. So you have now to take uh, this for and each and every t because t is continuous. So just some key points you can take and then you can plot the signal. Okay, this is how you get x of 3 by 2. So this is signal x t is basically compressed by alpha and in this case alpha is 3 by 2. And you can see 1 by 3, which is less than 2. Okay, it means it is signal compression here basically. And if you plot the same signal and 2 by 3, if you plot x of 2 by 3 for the same signal, what you will get? So you have to divide this with 2 by 3 simply. So 1 divided by 2 by 3, this will become 3 by 2, which is 1.5. And 2 divided by 2 by 3, it will become 1. 2 divided by 2 by 3, it will become 2 into 3 by 2, it will become at 3. So initially the signal was from 0 to 2, now it is stretched from 0 to 3. Okay? So this is for the case when alpha is less than 1. This is how you can plot the time scaling function. Okay, so in, in, if it is in discrete case again, it means you have x of n, and if you scale it, it becomes x of alpha n. Now alpha in this case is again a integer value only. Okay, because see if you suppose take x and any signal, and if you take x of two n y n is equal to x of 2 n. What it simply means that your y 0 is x 0, your y 1 is x of 1, x of 2 sorry, then your y 2 is x of 4 and so on. It means you are taking sample at 0, then 2, then 4 and so on. This is what is called as in discrete case we call it as decimation basically in place of scaling operation so decimation means you are discarding some samples in between two samples so if you have input signal like this xn and if you decimate if you plot x of 2n what will be in the output you are getting first sample you will take first sample x of 0 then you will take next sample which is at n is equal to 2 it means you have to discard this sample you will take this sample only then discard this sample take this sample discard this value take this sample discard this value and so on so in between every two samples you are leaving one sample this is what is decimation okay and if you plot x of 3n in that case what will happen you are taking sample at 0, then at 3, then 6, 9. In it means in between you are just leaving the two samples. You are discarding the two samples. This is how you basically uh, convert the sampling rate. Okay? But that is a different course. Maybe you I will not go into that. But this is what is how you do scaling, time scaling in your uh, discrete signals. 
Okay. And if I plot, if, if I have x of n by 2, y n is equal to x of n by 2, how will I plot y n? At n is equal to 0, you are getting y0, which is x of n by 2. So x of n by 2, 1 by 2, there is no sample, it is basically simply 0. Then when it is 1, when n is equal to, sorry, at 0 it is 0, when n is 1, y1 is x of n by 2, so we again 0. Okay, so at the first sample it will be same as x of n, second is 0. Then at n is equal to 2, this will be x of 1. Then at n is equal to 3, 3 by 2, it is again 0. Then at next sample, then 0, then next sample, then 0, then next sample, and so on. This is what is called as interpolation. Okay. So if you have x of n by 3, n by 2, it simply means in the input sequence you have to insert one zeros between every two samples. This is a process how to increase the sampling rate basically. This is a process how to decrease the sampling rate. Okay. So if I take a sequence, xn is equal to maybe 0, 1, 2, 5, 6, 7, 8. Let us suppose. What will be x of 2 and for this? You are taking first sample, then you have to delete this next sample. 1, you have to take 2, then 5 you have to delete, you have to take 6, and then 8. It means the sample will become half in this case, basically. But if you take x of n by 2, what will be? You have to insert 1, 0 between every two samples. So you have 0 already present in the input, then you will insert 1, 0, then next sample 1, then again 0, then 2, then 0, then 5, 0, then 6, then 0, then 7, then 0, then 8. So your signal length in this case will become double basically. Okay? You are inserting 1, 0 between every two samples. But say as far as signal system course is concerned, we mostly focus on the Continuous time zone. Right? This discrete signals you will study in more detail in your higher semester, maybe in the course of digital signal processing. Okay, there is a separate topic on this, which is called as multi-rate signal processing, in which how you learn how to increase and decrease the sampling rate of a signal, and that is very important. Okay, so but we will not go into that detail. So just to conclude, what we have learned in today. We have learned three basic operations. One was your time shifting. It means it is either x of t minus t naught or x of t plus t naught. If it is x of t minus t naught, it means it is a right shift. The signal is shifted by t naught time to the right side. If it is x of t plus t naught, it is a left shift the signal is shifted by t naught time to the left side which is called as this is also called as time delay this is also called as time advance operator okay the second we have discussed it was time folding so in the time folding your xt becomes x of minus t okay so the signal is simply folded around t is equal to 0. So whatever are the positive, add whatever is the signal value at positive t that comes at negative t. It means t, whatever is the value at t is equal to minus 1 that will come at t is equal to 1. Okay, whatever value is at, at t is equal to 2 that will go to t is equal to minus 2. So you fold the signal and then third was your time scaling. So from xt you generate x of alpha t where alpha may be greater than 1 or alpha may be less than 1. So you are compressing or stretching the time axis basically using this time scaling operation. Okay. If alpha is greater than 1, this is a linear compression. The signal is compressed in time. If alpha is less than 1, it is a yeah, expansion. So either the signal is compressed or it is stressed in time, 
depending upon whether alpha is greater than 1 or it is less than 1. Okay. So this type of uh, time scaling operator, like suppose we have an audio record. Okay. XT is suppose a signal which is an example of a audio recording and if you plot if you uh, have operation on this xf 2t what it means so if the recording of the original signal is suppose 4 minutes okay xt the recording of x of 2t will be only for 2 minutes it is compressed in time by half it means you are basically having the same information in half of the time okay so if you play XFT and if you play XF2T, keeping in view that XT is already recording, what is the difference? When you play XF2T, it means your recording is basically played at double speed. Okay? Because you have the same information that is now played at half of the time. And if you have XFT by 2, it is stretched by a factor of 2. So 4 minutes recording will be played in a time interval of 8 minutes. So you are playing the same recording at half the speed. This is what is basically time scaling operation. Okay. And if you see the same example for time folding, it means you are playing the same audio record in the backward direction. Fold it. Right. So next we will see that how to combine all these operations in a single signal means See, right now we have taken examples where we have only in one signal either it is a time shift operation or a time folding or a time scaling so there may be a signal like this you may have a signal like this suppose x of minus 2t plus 5 so this signal this transformation contains all the operations because if it is t plus 5 it is time shift 2t it is time scale minus t it is fold okay it means starting from xt, if you want to approach to x of minus 2t plus 5, you have to apply all the three operations. You have to fold it, you have to shift it, you have to scale it. And the question is that how you have to do this. Whether you should do first scaling or folding or shifting. What is the sequence of operations that you should apply? So that we will uh, discuss in the next lecture.